When talking about the most influential TV writers of the past decade, there are some obvious names that come to mind. Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould for Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Donald Glover with Atlanta. Also, David Benoff and D.B. Weiss, who signed a $200 million deal with Netflix years ago, and the only thing they've made for them since is directing a Leslie Jones stand-up special. So like, clearly things are going great for them. But when looking at all of the amazing writers working currently, there's one that, at least to me, stands out from the rest and that's Michael Schur. Michael Schur started his career as a writer at Saturday Night Live and then went on to be an executive producer at The Office and then create the show Parks and Rec, The Good Place, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, as well as be an executive producer on Aziz Ansari's Netflix show, Master of None. Essentially, if you're under the age of 60 and there's been an NBC show you've liked from the past 10 years, Mike Schur was probably involved. It's also very easy to find a lot of similarities between the four major shows that he's been the most involved with. All are ensemble comedies, three of which take place in a workplace and have either mockumentary or mockumentary-esque type styles. There's also a very similar writing and comedic style, especially among these three, where we actually see entire character archetypes basically cut and pasted from one show to another. Dumb but hardworking, smart and neurotic, scary and aloof, and the one character found in every Mike Schur show, because we love it every time, sweet but no brain. But beyond character similarities or comedic style, these shows all share some very specific tonal elements as well, which is the subject of this video. See, there's one thing that Mike Schur is better at writing than basically everyone else, and that's empathy. And what I mean when I say empathy is that a quintessential part of every Mike Schur show is this idea that caring about other people and working together to solve problems makes us and the world around us better. The thesis of his writing is that it's our connections with other people that make us better ourselves. There's a quote from The Good Place that says this pretty literally. When Michael says, Look, the point is, people improve when they get external love and support. How can we hold it against them when they don't? That's Mike Schur speaking directly to the audience. He even named the freaking character in the show Michael so that spaghetti brains like me could understand it. The Good Place as a whole is easily the most obvious example of what I'm talking about. The entire show is framed around how these four flawed people are able to improve themselves through their connections with each other and how about caring about others makes us better. This is also pretty blatantly apparent in Parks and Rec as well, which is about a team of people that care about each other, working to help those around them. And through these human connections, they're able to rise above their menial station as low-level government bureaucrats and actually help a lot of people. This idea of writing with empathy isn't just in the tone either, but also reflected in these shows' shared comedic styles. Setting aside for a moment the discussion about Brooklyn Nine-Nine being copaganda, which is completely valid and I have nuanced feelings on, but also clearly wasn't the original intention of the show, so we're not going to discuss it right now, the show has done a pretty amazing job of being representative of people from all walks of life. And the show is able to do this really great thing, where it has this really diverse cast, and it's able to make comedy out of that, without someone's race or their orientation ever being the butt of the joke. For example, the show does get a lot of comedy out of the fact that Captain Holt is gay, but the punchline is never just that he's gay or some kind of outdated stereotype or anything like that. Instead, it's something like how Jake sees him and Kevin as his adopted fathers. This joke is still reliant on the fact that Holt is gay, but his sexuality isn't the punchline, and that's a really important difference. And I think the reason this is all so important is because when you choose to write characters that display empathy, that can affect the way we, the viewers, choose to lead our lives and the way we treat the people around us. For most of middle and high school, uh, I thought that I wanted to be a political science major and go on to work in government. And I realized that I fucking despise all politicians and often wonder why I ever wanted anything to do with all of that. And there's a quote from Parks and Rec that actually answered this question for me. When we worked here together, we fought, scratched, and clawed to make people's lives a tiny bit better. That's what public service is all about. Small, incremental change every day. Teddy Roosevelt once said, Far and away, the best prize that life has to offer is a chance to work hard at work worth doing. And I would add that what makes work worth doing is getting to do it with people that you love. And so I realized that it was never actually that I wanted to go into politics. I just admired the character of Leslie Nope, and I wanted to be like her. She worked hard for noble causes and always tried to help others whenever she could. And in seeing her do that, that's what I wanted to do too. Mike Schur wrote a fictional character 
that was able to inspire me to be more idealistic and strive to help others. And that's pretty incredible. Another good example of this is from the show The Good Place. I found this show junior year of high school, which if you watched any of my previous videos, you know that this was kind of not a great time in my life. But the show's messaging that flawed people can become better if you actively worked at it had a huge impact on me at the time. This idea of writing for empathy having real world effects also translates over to the kind of jokes you choose to tell, like I was talking about before. By purposefully choosing never to belittle someone's race, gender, or orientation for the purpose of a cheap laugh, these worlds you're creating automatically become more inclusive and a place that anyone can come and enjoy and find solace or comfort in whenever they need it. There's a Mike Schur quote from an interview he did where he was talking about the central idea behind writing The Good Place. And in the quote, he says that it's not about being perfect. It's just about trying to be better than you were yesterday. And that's stuck with me ever since. The messaging and themes from these shows has had a very direct impact on the way I've chosen to live my life trying to show greater kindness and empathy towards others. As someone who's now in college for screenwriting, these are the kind of scripts that I try and base my own work off of, because I think we could all use more empathy in our lives, especially right now. It's the mentality that I base the content of this YouTube channel around, trying to create videos that could maybe make someone feel a little better about themselves or the world. To close this video out, I guess I just have to thank Mike Schur for what he's done for me personally. His writing has made me more compassionate and idealistic and to strive for self-improvement whenever I can. I can honestly say I would not be the person I am today without these shows. So to Mike, I say thank you. And to you, the viewer, I say thank you for watching. Please have a nice day. Hey, if you watched the whole video, friggin, friggin thanks for watching, man. I, pr I appreciate the heck out of it. Um, if you want to find me on other platforms, uh, I'll link my Twitter. It'll be around here somewhere. I also have a podcast that I do with my roommate, Sophia. Uh, check that out. The Spotify and Apple Music uh, links will be in the description. It's a lot of fun. You check it out. Listen to it. We, we have a good time. All right. Mm, see you later. Bye-bye. Mm,